And before all of that, after decades of decline, a new study has found that the number of city-dwelling hedgehogs are finally starting mm. to grow. But sadly, urban hedgehogs are faring much better than their country cousins, whose population has fallen by as much as 75% in some rural regions. And with less than a month to go until they leave hibernation, uh, Benga McCubbin is joining us now with ecologist uh, Hugh Warwick to share advice on caring for our spiky friends. I want to start by saying that there's a hedgehog in the garden, it was nesting, it was all covered up, obviously didn't want to disturb it at all, but I thought, oh, it's going to get, if it gets really, really cold it's under a little pile of leaves so i bought online a hedgehog house i put out some cat food uh put the hedgehog house by the side so that when it woke up it might look and think oh it'd be a bit warmer in here and it ate the food and left <laughs> yeah to be honest phil that sounds about right hedgehogs are very kind of well, they've got their routines and they like to go wherever they go but keep it there because the chances are if it comes back looking for a place to hibernate it will come back and find that they, house they can also be really ungrateful they can be, <laughs> <laughs> they can be. i have to say hedgehogs are one of my <laughs> hedgehogs are one of my favorite animals though i absolutely love them and i'm definitely not alone in that because most of the uk in fact most of the uk have voted it the favorite mammal of the nation and it's clear to see why they're utterly adorable and it was only last year i was with you Hugh, and we were filming for this morning and we went to brent lodge wildlife hospital and we saw some rehabilitated hedgehogs there but I have to say, I haven't actually seen one since, which is quite concerning. I mean, yes, I mean, one of the things we found, especially with this report, which has just come out, uh, the State of Britain's Hedgehogs Report, is all the work that we've been doing with the People's Trust for Endangered Species and the British Hedgehog Preservation Society, using citizen science, other people's data, giving us a clue as to what's going on, has really shown exactly what you're saying about what you're seeing, not, well, not seeing, is reflected across the entire country. Now, I mean, there are some good bits to it. And after a considerable amount of decline, uh, well, an enormous amounts of decline over the last few decades in urban areas, um, our urban hedgehog populations have begun to slightly increase. And that's where the Hedgehog Street campaign, which we've been working on for so long, the last 10 years, has been focused with its efforts. But yes, as, as you mentioned, in our countryside, the hedgehog populations have been suffering some really, really disturbing uh, declines. And yeah. we really need to begin to look at ways we can address that. Exactly, because whilst the populations in some urban areas are stable and slightly increasing, mm. there's still a lot of work to be done because that is off the back of such a dramatic decline itself. Oh, completely. And the great thing is, in suburbia, we've got gardens, if we're lucky enough to have a garden, where we can do things to help hedgehogs. We can actually make our garden hedgehog friendly. We can deal with the, the biggest sequence of problems. And the most important bit is you make a garden hedgehog friendly. If they can't get in, it's going to be useless. So absolute top tip, the concrete gravel board, the wooden gravel board, the kickboard at the bottom of your fence. All you need is a 13 centimetre square hole uh, in, in that. It's the size of a CD case or I've had to calculate about 26 mobile phones stacked on top of each other because I'm finding people have forgotten how big a CD case is these days. Yeah, I don't think I need one, I have to admit. Yeah, completely, it's disgraceful. <laughs> uh, but you make, you make the hole in the fence, the hedgehogs can get in because, I mean, the hedgehogs are, are, are blessed with many qualities. The only spiny mammal, a wonderful hibernating animal, very cute, uh, but they can't fly. Um, and I know that the RSPB would love to think that hedgehogs were one of their birds, but they're not. So hedgehogs are, are an amazing creature. We need to help them. So we can do that by making the hole in the base of the fence 13 centimetres square. And that is the essence of the Hedgehog Street campaign. Make your garden hedgehog friendly and then make the hole so the hedgehogs can get in. It's a really in. important thing to do because they've got to move around to find mates, to find resources. And that habitat fragmentation, putting fences in the way, really does um, you know, aid mm. that decline. So we need to make our gardens more wildlife friendly. And one way we can do that, of course, and you're going to like this view, is we've got to keep our gardens wild, keep a patch. And I happen to have a pile of logs here and a lot of hedgehogs at the moment will be hibernating in areas like this. But yes. we can't underestimate the value of those wild spaces, can we, in gardens? No, absolutely. And one of the things I get really agitated about is, is the cult of tidiness mm. and this idea that we need to make our gardens some sort of monotonous and boring and bland space, basically an ex another room for our house. But actually what we need is to learn to share. I mean, that's, we, we tell our kids to do that all the time. We need to learn to share. These gardens are an amazing boon for us if we get the opportunity to, to, to get out into them. Think back to lockdown. Those of us lucky enough to do it, what was our salvation? It was being outside, having that little breath of air. Share that with a bit of nature, you will feel better. And you get rid of the culty tidiness, make a pile of wood like this. Yeah. Dead wood is so fantastic because dead wood like this is rotting. Whereas it rots, the fungi in that wood gets eaten by little insects. Those little insects lay eggs, which become the larvae which the hedgehogs have as food. So board and lodging.
It's a really important thing. And of course, we're heading into spring and summer. The hedgehogs are going to be starting to wake up and start becoming active again, which is really exciting. Always something nice to see. So you can start leaving out perhaps shallow dishes of water, good for all kinds of wildlife as well as hedgehogs. Um, and potentially some wet cat food as well can be quite good for them as they start to wake up and need a bit of a boost. But if you don't have a garden, what can people do to get involved if, you know, campaigning wise and also in those communities where it's rural based? How do we support rural hedgehogs? Yes. OK, so I mean, two big questions yes. there. Um, um, certainly, you've got a, uh, you've got an, uh, 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 you don't have a garden, you don't have access to a garden. There are still things you can do because the parks around where you live, the, the, the churchyards, the school playgrounds, the sports fields, all of these things are managed on your behalf to a large extent by the local authorities or by other land managers. Talk to them. When you see new developments taking place, um, go and talk to the people who are putting up the new houses. Are they going to put in hedgehog highways? Uh, these are things which uh, you know, the campaign, the change.org petition I run, um, uh, Save Our Hedgehogs, has got now over a million people signed up to it to try and get people to get those holes made in new developments. Now, to our countryside, you've got to have a think about the name of this animal. The hedgehog. You know, what's its fa what, do you, what do you reckon it likes best? Talking about like hedges. They like the hedges. Yeah. They hog the hedges. They're fantastic at that. They are edge specialists. They're actually what's known as a woodland edge specialist, and they will always aim for the edge of the woodland. Um, and the hedgerows are an amazing analogue for that. But the problem is we are 300,000 kilometres down. We need more hedgerows, and the ones that are left need to be managed better. So use your voice, get campaigning and ask your local representatives what they can do to support hedgehogs and hedgerows. Now, Phil and Holly, back to the studio. Let's head back to you. When was the last time you happened to see a hedgehog? Because for me, it's been a while. I've yeah, never well, seen one in the wild. House, with, um, my, with my little hedgehog house. Wasn't that, that long ago? That was oh. a couple of you, months. You were saying that you mustn't feed them. Yeah, because the temptation is to put a saucer of bread and milk out, but that's not good for them. Um, no. Absolutely not. I mean, hedgehogs are lactose intolerant. Uh, the problem is they don't know that. Um, so, I mean, they will, but it's going to give them diarrhoea. So, no, they just need water and they need, me um, um, they need meat. Uh, they're a carnivore. And actually, you were talking about wet cat food. Uh, dry cat food is just as good. And if you go online and look for a hedgehog feeding station, you can find out ways of feeding the hedgehogs so that you're not feeding the neighbourhood birds, foxes, cats and rats. Amazing. So you can put the food out without worrying about attracting pests. Very Thanks, good. guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you both.